Hey, we're back with Marceau. Uh, this is the prequel to the entree, titled The Day Before. Uh, now, I really like the entree, and I wanted to check this out. This game is also available on Itch.io, and so if you want to experience it for yourself, uh, please feel free to click the link below. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, this game uh, pretty much focuses around the idea of suicide. So if you do at any point feel uncomfortable during this video, um, you are more than welcome to click off. Anyway, let's go ahead and begin. 4.59. At 5 o'clock it all ends. I've done this so many times. My body lays here waiting for the inevitable. Stiff in the stillness. How many times has it all ended? It ends over and over again. I can't remember if 4.59 where it didn't end. The last minute. Every fucking time it gets me. I break off into some train of thought. Awake, waiting, but not actually here. It's like I'm some abuse victim that detaches myself as I sense the abuser coming to visit me. Like I go to some other place, escaping myself, leaving only the meat behind for them to do with as they please. Then it comes and the shock pulls me back, throws me into the current. The current moment and I'm forced to be present and accounted for, zigzagging through the routine. And I do nothing to stop it, nothing to help it. Every goddamn 459. Alright, let's jump on the train. I remember seeing a car crash when I was younger. My dad was driving. Mom was in the passenger seat. I was in the back. Dad slowed as we approached. I raised myself to the back window behind him. I had never seen a real car crash before. It was weird because it was a straight road and the car had spun out sitting sideways across the lane. Another car parked further up must have been the collision also. As we moved slowly around the car, I could see the back of a lady still moving, and some guy whom I could only see the top of his head slumped on her lap. Dad had the window down slightly. I could hear her screaming and crying. We moved past, never stopping, like we were on some amusement ride. As we rolled past, I tried to get a look at her face, but even though we moved gradually, the scene seemed to glide into the distance behind us. I moved into pace with it to the back window, but it was already too late. I missed her face. I didn't even look into the other vehicle as Dad increased speed, exiting the road hazard. A road hazard? Was that all it was? Why didn't we stop that day? Why didn't we try to help? What was it Dad said? He said, beep, beep, beep. What? Fuck. It got me again. The ending. Five fucking o'clock. Time to get up. Alright, turn it off. Time to wake up, sleepyhead. God, that's so creepy. Pitch black. But I know where every single thing is. Socks. Pants. Phone. 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 It feels heavier than usual. Great. It's gonna be one of those days. Let's head out. One of those days. Out the room, down the stairs. 23 minutes and counting. Bathroom. Piss. Teeth. Face. A glass of water. I read somewhere a glass of water helps deflate the stomach for the day. Got used to it. Now it's part of the routine. Has been for a while now. Birds are chirping outside. Means the sun will be up soon. It never used to be so bad. But the fucking kids next door built birdhouses. They're okay for three young boys. They get rowdy sometimes, but that's expected behavior, I guess. Damn it. I need to shit. It's gonna be putting me behind by four minutes. What are we late for? Uh... I mean, I don't want it to be <laughs> cause any trouble later. Should we shit or not? Of course. 27 minutes later. Leave. The sun is beginning to rise. 
Still, through the street is though the street is empty, if I quicken my pace, I can catch some of those minutes. The only one who would be up at this time. Jesus, please don't be outside. Up the street, turn the corner. Ah, shit, he is. The baker. Fucking weirdo. Ever since I was small, this guy had given me the creeps. He's part of the reason I leave at 523. I hate walking past him. He just stands there watching me with a ghoulish glare and a s simpler half-smile hidden under his bushy mustache. Doesn't he have things to bake? He hasn't aged a day since I can remember. He's outlived everyone in the neighborhood. I think they mentioned the baker in the entree. He goes to every funeral and always stands at the back of the church. Always the first there and the last to leave. He sends a warm loaf of bread to the family of the deceased. No note, no reason, just some sort of signature gesture. I remember him at my parents' funeral. I also remember his loaf of warm bread that arrived at my house, carried by his assistant boy Baker. The boys always grow older and get other jobs. He just replaces them with another boy. My aunt left it on the table in the kitchen. I threw the fucking thing out ladies later. Fuckhead. I'll leave him a fruit basket at his shop front when he's dead. I hate the smell of Mick Red now because of him. Alright, let's keep moving. Ah, back on track. The train should arrive momentarily. I remember reading once that in Japan, if someone commits suicide by jumping in front of a train, the train company can or will usually sue the bereaved suicide victims' families for derailment or cleanup fees. Must be in the mornings on the way to work. At least I wouldn't have anyone that would get stuck with a bill. But a warm loaf of bread would surely be left on my front door. Alright, let's go inside. Is that true? Probably. <laughs> I've thought about it on those mornings I have to wait when the train is late. I see it coming and think, just one leap. Get our ticket. And it's all over. No more 459. It would be 448 forevermore. These two gave up trying to chit chat with me a long time ago. Like most others, I deal with on the daily. I give them the money, they give me the ticket. It's pleasant. Part of me wants to communicate. I am happy to see them every morning, regardless of how I'm feeling. If I walked in one day and they weren't here, I would be saddened. These two wrinkles are pretty decent human beings. I've seen them help many people over the years. Always dutiful. Always willing to be there for anyone. I want to be like that. I really do, but I just... I just can't, won't, want to, hope need to? It's just too hard to. It's like every time I'm about to connect, to say something, to offer something, even to reply, the moment moves on and I just miss out. I just slip behind it. It eludes me and then it dissolves and I'm left standing there at arm's reach just outside of it all. Then it's over and nine times out of ten, I look like an anti-social fuckwit that's obnoxious and pretentious. Something like that can only happen a few times, then people give up on you. Most dislike you afterwards, but I don't think these two dislike me. They're genuine and don't hold grudges. They've just grown accustomed to my awkward existence. You hear the train in the distance. Suddenly a gust of wind blows a newspaper into your face. <laughs> the fuck? You remove it from your face. I knew it was going to be one of those days. You think as you look it over. What? This paper is old as fuck. You flick through the, uh, the few pages. It's only part of a newspaper. Uh, we got ads here. Evaporated milk. Bordens. <laughs> look at the ads. Evaporated milk with part of the water removed. <laughs> Kellogg's advert for constipation. Funny as... More adverts, but one part catches your attention. A weird, three-pointed hatted creature who oddly feels alive. Below reads, 
Ugh, that is a uncomfortable sentence. The last opportunity. You find yourself transfixed until screech. The train. Ooh. You throw the paper to the wind as the train slows before you. It rolls slowly past you and the steel wheels against the rails rumble through your chest. Burned oil from the brake system fills your next breath as you take a deep inhale. Eyes slightly squinted as not to get anything in them. It meets its stop with a jutted halt. Let's get on. Yes, nobody's on it yet. Sometimes if I'm late, there would be at least two or three other passengers. Then I'd have a hard time deciding where to sit. Gotta be in the middle of the carriage, so if there's, emergen if there's an emergency or someone I don't feel comfortable with to walk past, I can easily easily choose either door to exit. The middle also never attracts too many other passengers. People always seem to look for the easiest convenience. They sit as soon as possible and closest to a door, just so they can get out quicker. To go where? For what purpose? A not objective. Purpose. Where is the purpose? What if their door never opens? All of a sudden they find themselves furthest away from the exit left behind because they expected the normal. They have succumbed to the absurdity of rules to an assured reality that really has no rules. The train begins to move. Let's check out the view, I guess. The train speed is steadily increasing. You look out your window and begin to look up at the passing by trees. Birds, even the saddest ones, still manage to sing songs. 723. 723 trees on the way to work. There used to be 724, but they removed one for a new house. I think I'm possibly the only person in all of existence that remembers that tree. It's been years now. The train moves on and the familiar scenes pass by, slowly rocking you from side to side. Industrial area, nearly there. You begin to watch the buildings pass by like guards of the outer city who have never yielded. On watch, looming over any individual entering with one message in solidity and solidarity. Conform, adjust. Or maybe that's just my personal bleak outlook. I wish I could be, like most others, content, docile, and just satisfied with the way things are. I wish I couldn't see how everything is just... Wrapped up in wrapped up ideas delivered with the most blinding colored wrapping paper that they miss the subject matter within. Any message is okay as long as the wrapping paper suits the eye. From murder to love to sex to how one should fit in, to who we are meant to be or what is expected of us. Happy to pull the wool over our no, to pull the wrapping paper over one's eyes, rather than face our own selves. Here we go, into the fucking dead spot again. <sighs> Time to suit up. God, I fucking hate this. The train moves through the tunnel. You feel entombed and you notice your breathing pace excites and the feeling of anxiety pulses through you. It grinds through a halt. What? You exit the train and walk the exact same route as every other time. It's empty in this part until you enter the main part of the train station. Alright, down the halls and up the stairs. Noise and light burst into your awareness. You settle within yourself and begin to move through. You look at each person you pass by trying to make some sort of connection. A smile, eye contact, anything. Nothing. Fucking nothing. It's like they're non-existent. This isn't enough. This ruin feels like pain and their faces are all happenstance. It's not enough. I feel like screaming. Hello, you bastards. Heads down and empty. You keep walking. Shut the fuck up and utter, utter nothing. Just continuing alone inside your head. Everything burning and raging up inside you. The last opportunity. Huh? The newspaper. You turn and look. 
a beggar. They're always hanging around the train station. The last opportunity to save Peggy. What? Well, I don't know. Approach him. You walk over to him. Something inside you recognizes some sort of point of view. You stop right in front of him. Hello, that comment you made. Who's Peggy or why is it the last opportunity? Why is it the last opportunity? Because time runs thin and you never really know where you're standing until you know that you won't run away. Don't you want to be alive before you die? T to connect not with others, but with you. <laughs> what? With me? I am connected to me. How can I not be? Me. Out of all people. Me. Be prepared for hell. It'll open your eyes when you realize you've already died. This crazy fuck. What a waste of time. I'm just searching for something in a coincidence. Hmm. You move on realizing there isn't much more for here. More here for you. It's all cancer of nothingness. Viruses of fingerprints. Maybe all of us were never meant to know each other at all. It's all the, just the mind looking for signs and meanings. But there is no balance and it should be a, all taken, a, taken as a grain of salt. Coffee. I need some fucking coffee. You look around to see if anyone noticed you talking to the homeless nut job. Nope, no one cares. Life shuffles on, oblivious to anything around it. Everyone has their own shit to focus on. Two old bitches sleeping in, on a chair. Fuck, I just wanted to walk over and boot them in the fucking face. What? I feel sick, they're, they're a waste of flesh and to think their ignorance is bliss. To think we're made from the exact same debris of the universe. Do I just hold myself higher than all of them? Who's to say I'm any more than them? I'm more intelligent, awake, illuminated, aware, smarter? Fuck, I'm repeating myself and really, I am not. At the end of the day, I'm not. You feel yourself capture your own throat. They're just people like me. They're just the same, but not as awake. Or awake, but more at peace with what they have. We're all just like test subjects. I want to help them all. I'm just so disadvantaged because I have no idea what the plan is. But I give my life just to understand and help others who are similar to me, seeking the truth at some level. I'd find a voice for that if I knew. Huh. This dude has a very interesting take on life. Does he hate people, or does he just feel bad for them? As you continue to walk through the train station, you notice a piece of paper on the ground. I mean, that's something. It reads, This letter was written by a handicapped girl. Please reply to her. She'll be extremely happy. <sighs> Great, now I'm collecting rubbish. Or searching for clues like fucking Nancy Drew. I guess that everything is impacting me more than usual. Random shit and some crippled chick. Jesus, I'm just adding to the lunacy. I do hope she got a reply though. At least someone be ha would be happy. Alright. You fade back into the crowd and blend effortlessly as you move on. Hmm... Oh, we do need some coffee. You head to the station cafe, walk in and head straight for the counter. The lady behind the counter notices you. She usually sees you coming and gets your long black two sugars and a dash of cold water ready to go. She knows you don't like conversations much and, like most others, gave up a long time ago. The difference is she took it personally and pretty much hates you now. You place the money on the counter, having your coffee money pre-prepared the night before, set in another pocket of your wallet separate to everything else. She walks over and places the coffee on the counter. She grabs the money, never looking at it once, knowing you always have the right amount. 
At least she finds me trustworthy. Worthy of something, or maybe just predictable. You take a sip. Damn fine coffee. It is, isn't it? It's good stuff. You turn to see an elderly man sitting just behind the entrance. You hadn't noticed him on the way in. You've never even noticed the table and chair there before. Maybe that's the ultimate joke. To find the good stuff in life is always a struggle. A constant struggle. The struggle itself is inseparable from the good stuff. Perhaps the endless searching is actually the good stuff, and the outcomes that we identify as the good stuff is itself just an appearance of sensations. So there really isn't any difference between the good stuff or just believing there actually is good stuff out there to even be found. You look him in the eyes. It's just coffee. You reply as motionless as possible, but still politely. I wonder if there is a better cup of coffee being served somewhere else. Don't you? He replies with a feeling of seriousness. It makes you feel uncomfortable as you don't know how to take its meaning. I, I don't doubt it, you reply as you start to make a move for the door. As you grab the door, he's looking up at you. Half empty or half full, he asks. You pretend not to hear him and don't bother answering it. What a weirdo. <laughs> half empty or half full? Neither. More like broken and my shoes are wet and no amount of towels can dry it. You push the thoughts out your head, downing the coffee then tossing it into a bin as you pass by. Satisfied that you couldn't even enjoy that. You get out of the station and all the noise and smells hit you. City. You think as you have this love-hate feeling about it all. It's not a long walk, but people are out and, out and about scuttling around each other as you walk. Even with careful planning, you still always have to move around some other person. It doesn't bother you as much here in the city as it's just part of what it is. Quack, 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 come here, ducky. <laughs> what? Kids, you think as you turn to see them chasing a duck down the side of the street. What? The fuck? What is wrong with their faces? What? They look like fucking dolls. They seem oblivious to you as they move past you into the main street still chasing the waddling duck. You rub your eyes and stand dumbfounded looking back at them running off. You're not even going to question it? <laughs> a short walk after a fairly weird morning, and you're at work. Yippee, electrical world. Well, that's what I like to call the shithole. The power plant. You slip through the main entrance, then through to the, to the main hall. Everybody is busy, but even if they weren't, they wouldn't notice me. Or if they did, they wouldn't would just look away or give me a neighborly nod. Through the generator rooms, the place practically runs itself. Only maintenance comes down here if I report something, which leans on the less likely time frame of things. Okay. Control room. The heart and nervous system of the city power, where I'll spend the next 12 hours. Sometimes I think this place actually sucks the energy out of me and powers the grid with it. I have fantasies of blowing myself up in here and shutting the entire city down. <laughs> it would be about four and a half minutes until the backup generators kick in from the smaller subpower plant near the train station. I would have an effect on the populace for four and a half minutes. Nothing more than a very short inconvenience, if noticed even at all. Better to wait for some important televised broadcast. At least it would piss a whole bunch of people off. You sit and begin to watch the control board, looking for any lights that flash or turn off. If they do, you ring management and report where it's happening. That is literally it. 13 hours later, 13 hours of pushing buttons, calling management. You get home and 
go through your routine. You eat and feed the dog. The dog was a stray that started hanging around your house a few weeks ago. You gave in and took it to the vet. You haven't named it as you feel it isn't right. It could already have a name. So you let it live with you. It's nice to have something else around in the house. He's a good dog, no bother at all. Spends most of the time out in the back, but comes into the lounge room and sits for you a while at the end of the night. When you get home, you leave the back door open and he comes and goes as he pleases. Let's watch some TV. You begin flicking through channels. Horror. I'm so fucking lost and unnamed in the mass of things. I suffer from it, but I don't like at this, but I don't at the same time. It's like everything and everyone is singular and incomparable, but also so minuscule and not worth mentioning. Press the button. Documentary. I should kill myself, but then I feel sorry that I want to die. I've become nothing. Would I just fill up a big water bowl and leave bags of dried dog food cut open for dog? <laughs> he named it Dog. I could leave the front door open also, but then the next door kids would probably get curious and find my bloated corpse. They don't need that shit. It would fuck them up for life. Cooking. It all has no meaning. It's just what it is, and that isn't very much. It's like man becomes prey to his own truths. Like when something is seen, it cannot never be unseen. Like those drawings that have a face or some shit in it, but then you can never stop seeing the face, and the picture is entirely different from then on. Horror again. I wish I could just go somewhere. Find somewhere where I would fit in, but that place is nowhere. I'm so fucking unwanted. But so is everything, really, when there's no reason behind anything. Infomercials. Fuck. But maybe... Maybe, because life doesn't have any meaning, maybe that's more of a reason to live. Because there really isn't anything holding me... You start watching the infomercials intently. Why have I been thinking like this? How could I have been so stupid thinking about ending it? What if this is just the worst that there is? Me upset at no one else noticing anything? No being able to connect with anyone or anything? What if this life of mine is really the worst there is? Should I really be wasting my life searching for answers I'll never get? What if there really isn't one answer to it all, but more like many smaller answers spread out across many other smaller things? Like smaller truths to be found out there. And not just a truth to be found. Shouldn't I just go along for the ride before I have to pay the bill and find out what I can in the meantime? I mean, who knows what it's on the other side, really? The other side, it could be worse than here. There's no certainty that it isn't. Maybe it is, but maybe it isn't. But taking that step is a choice I can't come back from. At least here I do definitely know that I can choose to a certain degree to make changes and improvements that seem fit and agreeable. And I can also step back from those choices at any time I wish. At the very least, here there are still possibilities. So, maybe is going to have to be the best word I can hang my life on. Maybe. It isn't much, but I, it still counts. Time drifts on and you sit content watching 15 minutes infomercials, one after the other. For the first time in a long time, you feel at peace and slowly deposit yourself into sleep and rest. Not long from here or now. So our character has hit a life epiphany. However, not long from now, our character will awaken and soon find themselves entering somewhere else. The dark? Not by their own choosing. Not yours, of course. This is and was the day before. The entree. Where everything will begin to unfold into itself. Where there is weight to many more choices and more to uncover. If you wish to continue the deeply interesting journey, I ask you to search for soul, the entree. Take care, friend, and thank you for your time.
see you in the entree. I think that was a short, a nice short, interesting anecdote. Maybe I should have played this before playing the entree. Uh, this gives us a little more, uh, gives us a little more insight into what our character was thinking of before the events of the entree. So here's this guy stuck in some routine like Groundhog Day. And the more he gets through every day, the more it feels like the days are blurring together. I feel like this is a guy who's kind of lost in the world. He wants to connect to people so bad, but he just can't. And I don't know. There was that there was that old man in the station who was like talking about um our character not being connected to themselves. And this character kind of mentions or kind of has the belief that maybe he uh, he's more awake than everyone else. Like you're the only one that's figured out how shitty and hopeless the world is. And that really adds to you know, the feeling of isolation. I feel like I've been there uh, a few years ago. And it's not it's not a great mindset to have especially if you want to connect to other people still this is kind of a surreal experience and I can kind of get an understanding of what the message is supposed to be but I think it is up to you to decide I don't know if you do have any thoughts about this story feel free to let me know but yeah, after this is when our character wakes up in the darkness. So I'm pretty curious about where this will all lead. And maybe this, there's some deeper lore here. But we'll have to see. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this short reading of The Day Before. And I will see you next time. Bye.